humbly and respectfully observe all protocols. And I bring you greetings from Tib Nation. And I bring you greetings also from my church in Jesus' name. Uh, the topic for this year, as you all know, I think I'm right. Tib Nation, the way forward. Uh, the distinguished statesman, Wantare Onongu, would have loved to be here in person, but for the changes in the country and his involvement with uh, leadership, calibration in the nation, uh, I'm asked to stand in his place. And I'm humbled to present his brief address. Uh, without beating about the bush, uh, this is a very straightforward topic, deserving a straightforward approach. We know where we are, where we have been, and where we should have been. We know we have already come a long way on this journey. It is needless waiting for someone to appear from the blues and provide the answer, losing time and speed in the process. But the answer is not far-fetched. It is right here with us. The answer is in our resolve, in our common resolve, to change our fortunes by ourselves. Enough of theorizing with romantic cliches. Actionable resolution is what we need. We must start where we are with what we have. What we're asking ourselves today is what the disciples asked Jesus when they realized he did not have much time with them. And the Jews could not wait to reestablish themselves as an independent sovereign state. So when, therefore, we are come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? His reply was as intriguing as the question. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father hath set within his own authority. But ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit is come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. While they asked for contentment, the Lord let them know that contentment alone is not satisfaction. Contentment alone is not independence. Mluwam kumam animyehiwo mtsega, philosophy will not take us to the pedestal we truly long for. We can overcome our challenges of poverty, insecurity, stagnation, and stagnation if only we can increase the level of our economic production, give our children access to better education, and provide conscientious leadership to our people. Increasing economic production will not only increase marketing opportunities, but increase our fortunes. If we desire to take our right of place, in Nigeria and in the world, we must look at TIV in contemporary Nigeria as a failed socioeconomic enterprise, endlessly desiring to bounce back. We must be desirous of turning our rich culture, soil, and worldview into an economic venture that must productively and profitably engage the rest of the world. We must commodify our rich culture. This will not only increase our economic power, but earn us political influence at home and abroad. While the Jews were, no, were nostalgic about past glory or content with, the least, with at least the status quo, Jesus proposed a paradigm shift. While they yearned for Jewish independence, Jesus proposed Jewish word conquest. I'm, not being, I'm just being figurative here, lest someone should take this in literal context and pick holes in my juxtaposition. But any time we come to a crossroad where there are many options, both right and wrong, 
the best person to ask for direction is our creator because he's the only one who knows the purpose for our creation. Our team culture recognizes the existence of one God and our forefathers elected to be Christians. We have no choice, therefore, but to question our Christ about our way forward. So, we can look at who we are, our capacities, past, present, and our future prospects, and you will agree with me that we're in the same position as the Jews were when the disciples became curious and anxious about their state of affairs. Such a situation as we have found ourselves in cannot be solved by fortune tellers, but by fortune seekers. While the answer of Jesus lay in the use of spiritual power for word conquest, we are here and now proposing the use of all our God-given abilities and opportunities to change our fortunes. Without a single question, we must urgently assemble and marshal both human and material resources to go into massive food production. This is what we can do with relative advantage over other states. Let us raise an agricultural team here and now, the same way the health team was raised, and we can, so we can jumpstart the agri show or agri fair. We all know how this show impacted on our food production in the past. We can replicate this in other sectors, but in order not to asphyxiate at this embryonic stage, we should take at least two aspects that will confirm our resolve to radically change our fortunes. The teeth have got their fair share in the national cake, of the national cake, but the twin Malays of Mluam Kumam and Mjehio Nsega have laid grip on our search to take our right of place in contemporary Nigeria. Mr. Chairman, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we need ideas that will remove us from the oil revenue dependent states. Even the reliance on IGR without reciprocal wealth creation is theft of the highest order. The state must develop a deliberate policy of rapid wealth creation. This will not only boost IGR, but protect its proceeds from system worms of prey. Let us bring out the best we have in teeth, invest it like a business, and market it like a product. There is something I have observed about the United States, where you live. They, they elect a leader as though they were looking for a businessman or salesman to market the product America. I realize when President Bush became bad PR for the United States, and there seemed at that time a search for a man who would remarket the nation to the world. Obama appeared on the galaxy with many intriguing qualities that suited the national mood. The nation would have a black president at the time. Arab nations were smearing the Amer America and using segregation as a tool. The nation would have Mr. Peace after a protracted war against terrorism. The nation going through economic recession would have a quasi-socialist who would champion economic revival and wealth redistribution. The nation would have a liberal Democrat to take on the conservative, profligate company executives, provide stimulus package for dime firms and keep nationals in their jobs. All this seemed good for the nation and Obama was elected. <laughs> the morale here is that the team nation ought to look at the bigger picture it is good for us to talk about our place in contemporary Nigeria, but while we do so, we must not be blinded by the tears of nostalgia and our present predicament. Let us wash our faces and look well ahead of us. Yes, we have fallen into the gutter of despair, but we can look at the stars of hope. Let us tell ourselves the truth, that our leadership in all spheres, <laughs> let us tell ourselves the truth, that our leadership in all spheres need a paradigm shift. Those who cannot change their attitudes and raise our altitude in the national scheme of things should be changed. 
Let our professionals go into the villages and train and retrain our people in various fields of human endeavor for us to optimize production in all fields. Let us consciously revive those areas in our culture that gave us our hitherto enviable name in and outside Nigeria, modernize where necessary and remarket same. Let us declare a state of emergency in, all, in our agriculture and consciously develop a strategy to boost food production. I will personally encourage the new administration, both at the state and national levels in Nigeria to work with Nigerians in diaspora, use their training, expertise, and exposure to support development at the home front. No one will come to knock at our door to give us ready-made answers. We have the manpower, the challenge is here, and the right time is here. What else are we waiting for? Thank you very much, and God bless you.